Can you talk a little bit more about how you determine where students are falling when you're meeting them where they're at and maybe like how you know when they're responding to the intervention? So like what, uh, what tier of uh, support does the student need? Yeah, how do you, how do you figure that out? Well, there's a couple, a couple things that we have to do when we're offering tiered systems of support. Uh, the first thing is we got to know how's everybody doing? Uh, this is like screening. We're going to mm -hmm. give everybody some kind of um, test, maybe a really short one where we have everybody read out loud for a minute and count how many words they can read correctly. And the point here is not to get like a, a snapshot of all of their skills, but just to be able to see globally across the whole grade level, how are we all doing relative to expectations for somebody in this grade at this time of year? Um, are there shifts that we've got to make in our core instruction? We don't know necessarily what shifts those would be. We're just trying to figure out how we're all doing. And then once we've got the screening data, that's where we go out and we get a, a big picture of how everybody's doing. We want to see, are there pockets of students that seem like they might need a little bit more help than the rest of the group? Mm -hmm. And these are students that we might consider for tier two or tier three interventions. When you think about the tiers of MTSS, it's really about resource allocation. Mm -hmm. The magic numbers that you're going to hear if you start reading about MTSS are 80, 15, 5. Or ideally, we would think that just general instruction, the, the universal uh, service that we offer everybody, the mm -hmm. curriculum that everybody gets, should be beneficial for 80% of our students. Um, you know, That's completely ideal. I don't know that I've seen that achieved. But we know that education is not a one-size-fits-all affair. And so there's going to be kids that will need something more or different than what they would get just in that core curriculum. So we think that maybe about 15% of kids are going to need something supplemental or in addition to, like a little extra practice maybe on some of the skills that they're learning or that they would need for core. And then there might be 5% of kids that need something much more intensive, uh, like a a much greater dosage of really explicit instruction on, um, you know, math calculation or computation procedures or uh, decoding multisyllabic words. Uh, so that's how you think about the different tiers. And then figuring out who needs what level of support is really a question that we ask with our screening data. Yeah, so, so on the mental health side, the SEL mental health side, it's very similar, although I would say it's new for districts. It's relatively new for districts to start doing this, but we're seeing it more and more where districts are using SEL screeners, they're using mental health screeners in the same capacity you would an, an academic assessment test um, screening um, to look at reading or math. We're doing the same thing with SEL and mental health. And so districts, what districts can do also with that data, similar again for academics, but it's now looking at you know your entire school building. Where does your school building building why in terms of SEL skills, you know, and where are, where are the gaps and where do we need to help kids, you know, sort of, um, you know, acquire skill at their SEL skills. And we can take those, we can use that to drive prevention programming, tier two similarly, small group targeting SEL skills, and then more intensive, which is typically what you see when you screen right away, you see those more intensive higher level need students who show up sort of in that in, in the risk area on the mental health side of those screeners. Um, and so then you can target and look at that small percentage of students that fall into those categories. But the idea is using it to really drive your programming across the tiers. But it's, it's again, like it's a great um, marrying of the two sides. I think if districts are really using them together. One of the challenges that schools face is once they've collected all these screening data, you could take a look across the whole group of, of students, but you still have to figure out which ones look like they really need intervention and which ones don't. And there's basically two approaches to this. One is where there might be a cut score for the test that you're using or the grading scale that you're using. And anything above or below that cut score might signify the need for intervention or maybe tier one is enough. Um, the challenge with using cut scores, though, is every once in a while, you'll get a cohort of students, or maybe standards might change, and the cut score, or the data come back, and you compare everything against the cut score, and now it looks like 60% of your kids need intervention, uh, which is not really the, the spirit of MTSS here. Uh, so that leads us to the other idea, is that um, thinking about need for intervention 
can also be in terms of resource allocation. So let's say we're in a scenario where for some strange reason, it looks like 60% of our kids are below this cut score and may, may need intervention. That's a sign that we've got to change something with our, our core curriculum. Uh, we've got a, a tier one problem to solve. And then we can think about uh, higher tiers of intervention in terms of what we've got instructional resources for, uh, space and time and money. Um, you know, if we know we've got this many seats in small small group intervention for reading, for math, uh, for behavior possibly, um, then we can sort of plan out accordingly, you know, by levels of need, who would get those. Now, what intervention we do, that's a different question. Mm -hmm. That's where we have to get some more diagnostic information about specific learning needs, specific SEL needs. Mm -hmm. And that tells us about, hey, which, which type of intervention would be helpful? in this context. And, and just to kind of add to that, I think one of the important things to understand about MTSS, it's not a one-size-fits-all model. Mm -hmm. um, I was just meeting with the school district on this, and it was, we were talking about, you know, the, there are lots of differences across school districts in the state of New Jersey, across the United States. And I think it's really important for, for districts to really gather this data, and they have a lot of data at their fingertips and really sort of use that to kind of create some local norms mm -hmm. because it's not you're not going to compare directly to what another school district is doing and sort of doing that assessment around and, and looking at your data and analyzing it in a way that you understand what your district looks like or your school looks like then you're driving really the needs within the population yeah. I think that's yes. on both sides very important. Prior, you guys talked about um, implementing um, interventions that are tailored to groups of students or individual students' needs. Can you um, talk a little bit about the difference between the NTSS framework as as opposed to um, the response to intervention or instruction framework that most schools are using today? Well, originally.